Welcome to the Fifth Estate Winning Headline, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you may have missed this morning, but we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 25th of February 2022, and I am Horio. I am DK. And I am AX. In case you missed the headlines, here they are. In the Daily Nation, profit or project? In the Standard, Sagana 3 aftershocks. In the Star, why Uhuru move is Ruto new headache? Bad grammar there. And in the People Daily, what Ukraine attack means for Kenyans. So as you know, we have a three-part criteria that we use to judge our headlines. We ask three questions. Is a headline topical or speculative? Repetitive or groundbreaking? Thoughtful or just plain lazy so let's begin with the daily nation profit or project what do you guys think lazy headline it what? is lazy, 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 headline. lazy headline. i don't know why they chose the word profit mm. <laughs> they say profit or project or project, or project. Yeah. They, in what they're talking about they talk more about him being a project ah. not a profit so i agree that it is it's lazy. a bit okay. lazy so let's just toss the daily nation toss right the daily nation. Let's, let, let's let's move to the star you yeah. know why uhuru move is ruto new headache apart from bad grammar what is how what do you guys feel about this headline of course there's headache there's headache <laughs> The bad it, grammar has thrown me off. It me. really has <laughs> thrown me off. I don't, I don't understand why there's an apostrophe missing there. It's yeah. not that hard. Yeah. So you have a headache. <laughs> but is there any other particular reason why you think the star headline should not be one of our winning headlines? Is it topical or speculative, repetitive or groundbreaking, thoughtful or just plain lazy? It's lazy. I it is lazy. lazy. Because if you miss an apostrophe, <laughs> <laughs> so I think we just toss it. I think we just let it go. There's no point to going on about it. Okay, and then we have the People Daily. Yes. What Ukraine attack means for Kenyans? Yes, this is topical, yes, we indeed. must say, but I feel like it's fear-mongering. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are going to get worried and mm -hmm. stop. I mean, just looking at the headlines, yeah. we're like, okay, what does it mean for Kenyans? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you read it and you're like, okay, this makes sense. But just looking on the face of it, I just, I would toss it. Okay. But we acknowledge what is happening yes, in indeed. Ukraine. Indeed. And, indeed. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay, so that leaves us with Sagana 3 aftershocks from The Standard. Mm -hmm. Is this a winning headline? What do you guys think? Yes, especially with what it is saying. Yes. Clipping Ruto's wings. Yes. And we've always say that Ruto is made of feet of clay. Oh, wow. One rain is afternoon in Gema, mm -hmm. then he'll fall. <laughs> this will happen in Sagana. Yeah. And those aftershocks are still going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right. there you have it. Our winning headline for the week is The Standard. Yes. Now, we have a very special episode for you today. Um, for you, why don't you start us off? All right. Once upon a time, a baby camel and his mother were resting under a tree. The curious little camel wasn't very happy about most of the parts on his body. So he said, Mother, can I ask some questions? Of course, dear, answered the mother. Mother, I have been wondering about the humps on our back. Why is it that only us camels have them? The mother smiled and said, This is because we live in the desert where water is scarce. The hump stores the water and releases it when we need it. The baby camel suddenly asked another question. Mother, why do we have long legs and round feet? They are ugly. His mother replied, Our long legs and round feet are for a reason. In the desert, it is difficult to walk, but with our feet, we have better control and we don't sink in the sand. The little camel nodded and said he understood, but his curiosity hadn't died just yet. Hmm he said, preparing for his next question. Mother, tell me one more thing. Why are our eyelashes so long? They bother me when they get in the way. Son, these long eyelashes are very important. The thick eyelashes act as a protective barrier for our eyes to keep the sand out. Still very, very curious, he asked just one more question. So mother, if the hump stores water, the legs and round feet help us walk easily in the sand, and the eyelashes keep the sand out, then what are we doing here in a zoo? 
The moral of this story is that the skills and abilities we possess are only useful when put in the right place, otherwise they go to waste. The political skills and abilities that Raila Odinga possesses cannot be understated. In fact, they cannot be ignored. We are not writing an apologia on behalf of Raila because his record speaks for itself. But sometimes we need to get the record straight when people are calling him the three Ps. A puppet, a pawn, and a project. We understand that the basis for calling him names is because he lost all his previous stabs at the presidency. His past failures, they say, is evidence that he can never ever make it. But I suggest that the story of the mother and the baby camel tells us otherwise. It reminds us that our best abilities will go to waste unless they coincide with purpose and time. We suggest that Ryla's talents have found the meaning for which they have been cooking. This week at Sagana, President Uhuru Kenyatta spoke of the dilemma over which he agonized during his second term. Attaining peace for a divided country and finding the right person to hand the country over to. Who would have ever thought a few years ago that the perfect choice would have been Raila? Who would have ever thought that Raila's humps, long lashes, long legs with round feet would be the perfect fit for 2022? In politics, coincidences don't just happen, but instead, events are divinely woven together to reveal a track record. And Raila's track record speaks for itself. Firstly, he is a master organizer and political tactician. Secondly, he is a statesman who transcends petty ethnic politics. And thirdly, he is passionate to the point of personal sacrifice about Kenya's future direction. As Uhuru Kenyatta has observed, Raila's skills and abilities are now required at the right place as Kenya's fifth president. And the camel story is both a warning and a lesson to William Bruto. Finding yourself in the zoo of life can be either a waste of time or a useful learning curve. As the president stated this week, Ruto's time could come in the future, but for now, it seems that the stars have aligned themselves for Raila Odinga. Indeed, it appears the stars are aligning, not just for Raila, but also to deliver a brutal blow to William Ruto. And anything he can do will only delay the inevitable, that Raila Amolo Odinga will be the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya. Sagana 3 has shown us this beyond the benefit of a doubt. And that is why we must give you the story of a man named Henry Ziegland. Now, Henry was madly in love with a beautiful lady, but after several months, the spark faded. And rather than do the honorable thing and break up with her immediately, Henry blamed his beautiful girlfriend for everything. He yelled at her and told her that she would be nothing without him. Eventually, months later, when he grew tired of this too, he broke up with her. His now ex-girlfriend did not take the breakup well. She was so distraught that she could not imagine life without him. And so she killed herself. She was found by her brother the next day. Seeing this, her brother was full of anger and believing Henry was responsible, he vowed to kill him. So he hunted Henry down, pointed a gun at his head and pulled the trigger. Henry fell to the ground like he had been hit by the bullet. But to Henry's surprise, he was not dead. The bullet had in fact only grazed his face and then got stuck in a large tree behind him. Henry thought of himself as a very lucky man. 
25 years later, Henry decided to cut down the large tree, except cutting it down was harder than he thought it would be. This is because if the tree was lodged 25 years ago when Henry got shot, 25 years later it had only gotten bigger and harder to cut down. Now the tree was so big that only an explosion could bring it down. So Henry decided to blow up the tree with a few sticks of dynamite. And this is where Henry's luck ran out. The explosion forced the bullet out of the tree and into Henry's head, killing him instantly. What is my point here? Things don't end wrong, they start wrong. This is William Ruto's fate. His political career will end badly because it not only began poorly, but because he has made poor decisions ever since. Like Henry, Ruto has made the wrong choice at every turn. When faced with a choice between politics and development, Ruto chose himself. He abandoned his post and tangatangaed around the nation, advancing his own cause. When faced with a choice between truth and falsehood, Ruto chose himself again. He took credit for Jubilee's achievements and blamed them for everything else, even though by his own estimation, Jubilee is a dead party. When faced with a choice of standing together with ANC or standing alone as UDA, Ruto chose, guess what, himself. This is why Musalia is still begging for a coalition agreement and why Ruto insisted that small parties disband to join him and not UDA. Ruto, like Henry, has made bad decision after bad decision. And like Henry, Ruto's luck is soon running out. So when the bullet stuck in the tree finally explodes out, he will have nothing left to do but to watch as it comes for his political head. In the days before Mpesa, a young Kikuyu father left Moranga for Nairobi to look for a job. He left his beautiful wife and four children at home. After a few months, he opened a successful business along River Road like all other Kikuyus. His business was thriving. However, he had a problem. How would he get the money to his family up country so far? He couldn't travel weekly and still manage to keep an eye on his business. So he honestly looked for someone that he could trust to faithfully deliver his brown envelope to his family on his behalf. He finally found someone from his village who agreed to deliver the envelope to his family. Dutifully, the man would deliver the package up country and the wife was always grateful to see him and receive the envelope that her husband had sent. Soon, the messenger saw an opportunity. He occasionally would tell the wife that the envelope was not from her husband, but from himself to the wife. Then he even got more creative and began to tell her that the purpose of this brown envelope was to console her as her husband in Nairobi no longer was faithful. <laughs> Understandably, the wife was infuriated by the betrayal. How could her husband do this to her? And before long, the wife began to change. Because of the supposed betrayal she felt, she also felt justified in embracing the bearer of the envelope. For the last four years, Uhuru Kenyatta has been working. Country entirely depended on him. He left his beautiful Gemma and his children waiting on him. In the meantime, he had trusted William Ruto to take care of his interest. But just like the envelope bearer, William Ruto became greedy. Seeing how beautiful Gemma's voting block was, he hatched a plan to inherit Uhuru and betray his trust. 
in churches and car rooftops. Ruto told Kikuyu that Uhuru was stuck in Nairobi with a new girlfriend called Raila. And if Kikuyus are happy this week, it is because they are beginning to understand the Uhuru truth. In the end, the Sagana lesson for Kikuyu is this. The children will learn that everything they got from the envelope bearer was sent by their father. Excellent point, DK. You've yeah, actually so DK. made me want to reevaluate the way in which I was parented and makes me want to go hug my mom and my father a little more tonight. Yes. And yes, must also consider doing an audit of who is giving you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so in a week, mm -hmm. or rather, that we've had our winning headline be the standard. Yes. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are also on your TV screens. You mm -hmm. can find us on Pang Free to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. Mm -hmm. DK, I believe you have a quote for us to a end quote. this episode. Yes. All politics is war. Mm -hmm. And now, in war, he will win. Who knows when to fight and when not to fight. Oh, fantastic <laughs> quote. Yes. Yeah. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching us. Have a good one.